guys, it's Tiffany, and you may be asking, why am I dressed like this? Well, I just got done uh, with uh, doing a uh, storytelling a gig at Beggar's Day at the Depreciation Lands Museum. So Beggar's Day is basically uh, their trick or treat day. So everybody gets a station and we each tell a story or a legend, kid friendly, of course. Um, of course I have to, I, I adjust mine. If I get, you know, some people who are older, um, adults, I might bring out the spook factor. If it's kids, I'll definitely uh, water it down a bit um, or a lot depending on how old the, the uh, kids are. But we each get a station, we get a story, a legend, um, some candy to go with that story or legend, and then we, as, as each kid, um, each group of kids uh, comes in their costume to a station, we give them the candy, tell them the story, or the treat, whatever the treat is, tell them the story. And today, I was in the wagon and I was telling the story of the legend behind the jack-o'-lantern. Now, it's a really kind of a cool um, Irish myth in itself, and it tells the story of Stingy Jack. And I, I thought it would be just kind of cool for me to uh, tell the story before I got out of my 18th century attire. Um, and by the way, Depreciation Lands Museum, it is is um, an 18th century living history site. So, um, so what um, I, I did was I had these little pumpkin cookies and it was a lot of fun. And like I said, I told the story uh, behind of the legend behind the jack-o'-lantern. Now, the story goes, um, there was a man by the name of Stingy Jack. And Stingy Jack, he obviously was not a very nice person, not the best person in the world. And he really, a lot of people did not like him. He wasn't very popular because he was known for being, well, stingy and just kind of, kind of a jerk, really. So he caught the attention of the devil. And then the devil approaches him and decides, hey, you know what? and this is just me telling it in my 21st century way, the devil approaches him, he's like, hey Jack, you know, I think I would like to have a drink and maybe we can discuss kind of maybe a little bit of a partnership here. So Jack is like, okay, you know, maybe we can do that. But Jack being the person that he is, of course, he does not want to buy his own drink. So he tells the devil, if you turn yourself into a coin, then we can trick that bartender, that pub owner, tavern owner, um, whoever's serving the drinks there into basically giving us a free beverage. I'll give them the coin. It's really you. You can turn back into who you are. We can go have our drinks. No harm, no foul. We are good to go. We don't have to pay a thing. So the devil's like, okay. So the devil turns himself into a coin. And instead though of going on his promise stingy jack takes the coin puts it in his pocket needless to say the devil is not at all happy about it so he demands that jack let him out jack says okay but only on the condition that you leave me alone for a year and when i die you're not taking my soul to the underworld so jack um so jack and the devil come to that agreement and the devil turns back into his original form. The two of them go on their way um, separately. So then um, a year passes and the devil revisits Jack. And then Jack says, okay, you know, we can hang out, but how about you climb up to that very tall tree, uh, climb up to the top, grab me a piece of fruit because I can't possibly reach it. The devil goes, okay. And so he climbs up the tree only to realize that there's a wooden crucifix on the top of the tree. So obviously this traps the devil. And then the devil demands that Jack let him down. And Jack goes, okay, sure, yes, I will let you down. However, you have to not bother me for 10 years and then uh, not take me to the underworld or to hell when I die. So the devil says, okay. And Jack climbs up to the top of the tree, grabs that crucifix, and he and the devil's left back down. They go on their separate ways. 10 years later, Jack dies. And 
Obviously, since Jack was kind of an unscrupulous character, um, God doesn't want to let him into heaven. And he already made the, the devil uh, pretty angry, and so Jack's not his favorite person either. So Jack has nowhere to go. He is banished to wander the dark plain for eternity with only a little piece of coal that he was given by the devil, a little piece of ember burning coal to light his way. Obviously this wasn't providing him very much light, so Jack comes across a turnip field and he carves a hole into the turnip, puts the coal in, and that serves as his lantern. And this spawned a, a tradition in Scotland and Ireland where they would take turnips and carve scary faces into them as a way to try to um, fend off uh, wandering spirits such as Stingy Jack, Stingy Jack in particular, and also um, just wandering spirits in general, especially at Samhain. And in England, I believe it says that they, they used beets and they didn't start using pumpkins until um, the settling of America uh, because pumpkins are an American, um, they're basically, they're an American uh, born, uh, I think they're a fruit, yeah, an American born fruit. Sorry, I, I was like, I've been telling the story all day. <laughs> so, but yeah, so that's how we came to carve our jack-o'-lanterns um, out of the pumpkins. So yeah, I just thought that would be a kind of a cool little story to uh, tell as part of my paranormal and urban myth and legend uh, series here on this channel. And yeah, so if you enjoyed that as well as other things that I'm doing here, click that subscribe button and like and share and I will see you in the next video.